Ready, George? I am. All right, let's well, do this. Let's build a Murphy bed. All right. Like you're the, you're the person with the knowledge, and it is my job to get you to give me that knowledge so that I can, you know. That's true, because I don't know what people don't know. My plan here is we're just going to talk over this and okay. give an old fist bump to Frank Howard and be like, man, I really like that you just talk in your videos. So this is a kit from Rockler Hardware. We're going to cut up some stock, prep it all to build a Murphy bed. Why are you making a Murphy bed? Why uh, did you make a Murphy bed? So I can hide my guest bed from in-laws I don't like. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Or so my wife can do yoga. I'm not 100% sure, but... She wants to yoga in home? Ooh, stop button. Yeah, and an out-of-focus shot that I really need to replace, but I'm not going to because you'll never be ready. That's never right. Never prepared. Let's just let's put it out to the world. That's right, folks. Perfection is a myth. The one thing I, I'm going to mispronounce is like, Kintsumi Kintsagi, when they break ceramics. Oh, they yeah, fill they, they, the they fill it back in with gold. To yes. Replace it. That is fantastic. That, that is, is cool. Mr. Winston, the dust mop. Well, why are you, why are you uh, putting those nails in there like that? Uh, they're clamping the gluing structure so that it'll give it a tight bond. Sometimes it's easier to just nail things together and then they're clamped forever. What's that? That's a Forzner bit. Ooh. It's for drilling big fat holes. I used um, engineered German screws. They are fantastic. What makes them different from, uh, you know, American dummy screws? For starters, they have a fluted tip, so they self-drive without the need to drive pilot holes. Okay. Though sometimes I use pilot holes when I'm worried. I don't. I don't remember the lobe type. It's not a Robinson style. It's not a square style. It's like a pentalobe. So what else is awesome about those screws? My favorite part is the. Uh, they call them like Uber screws, okay. non-ironically, because they're both made by German companies. Does it so that has the umlaut over the U and everything? I don't know. U? We should we should find out. Mmm, that IKEA bag full of Charlie's Jenga kit. But it's fantastic to have sixty pieces of two by four that are approximately exactly the same in your shop. Why? Earlier in the video, when I had the outfeed table set up. Uh, to change the height of the plastic table to the height of my table saw, there's mm -hmm. stacks of uh, four of those bricks underneath a full sheet of plywood. Okay. So this is the beginning of a large torsion box. It's not technically a torsion box because the supports that attach the top and bottom skin don't run perpendicular well, to each other. Well, why didn't you say that the last time we were talking about this? You can see the exposed struts, and then once we put another piece of plywood on top... Um, it effectively makes a whole bunch of squares that don't want to unalign. Um, so it allows it to hold its shape better. And it, it's a much more, it's, it's a much stronger box than it looks like. Torsion boxes are really fantastic. And it'll also stay dead flat. It'll stay dead flat? Yeah, like it won't, it won't warp. Like oh, the wood, okay. The, 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 because of how it's put together, the wood can't warp itself. What's this? Uh, that's a pin gauge. Uh, I actually use it wrong in this video. So what you do, it conforms to any shape, and then you have that shape to trace. Okay. Yeah. That's Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Too bad my walls were curved, so when I tried to install it, it didn't match up by about a quarter inch. So it was all for nothing. Wah, wah. But I don't show that because I didn't want to tell anybody that till right now. Well, there you go, folks. The first time that you set up a zero clearance table saw insert is always glorious though that plastic smelled like dying skunk when i was cutting it 100 percent. wait what it smelled like a skunk dying yeah why because the plastic was burning from the uh friction on the side of the blade oh fun yeah you know what's poetic sanding mm. it isn't sanding's terrible i like sanding it's therapeutic for me i like smooth things so i enjoy sanding i know what i'm done with this terrible tedious task that i'll be left with this beautiful surface but at the same point, other times I hate it. Most times I hate it. I like buying dollar clamps from Home Depot every time I go. How many do you have now? Over under 20. Eh, probably 20. All right. But you know what they say, you can never have too many clamps. And that's 100% true because that's why I used a, 40 gal or a four gallon bucket of drywall mud as a weight to glue on part of it. Are you going to be drywalling any place in your house that you would need a bucket of it? Uh, I'm drywalling every wall in my house. I'm skim coating every wall in my house. It's weird to have an iron in the workshop, but I guess it's something you need. For wrinkly clothes? 
uh, for edge banding. Oh, edge banding. Interesting. So that was me ironing some wood. It's a, a common technique to use an iron after you sand, especially if you're putting on veneer that needs to be ironed on to activate the glue. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I, okay. I really wish I had someone to help me build the bed like I'm having someone help me do the voiceover because moving it by myself is a pain. So the, the whole box is shellacked, uh, three coats of uh, de-waxed blonde shellac, and then wax with Renaissance wax. You know Renaissance wax is uh, pH neutral? Really? Entirely non-natural. It's entirely made from petroleum products. I'm really upset about this shot. I wish I would have done a little more work on the plane of focus because you see where it's now shiny and where it's matte. Yeah. And I wish I would have gotten a little uh, better. Yeah, that would have been nice. Re representation of it. What's that big black cylinder thing? Uh, that's my air compressor. Ooh. How many pounds of pressure can fit into that puppy? I run it at approximately 140 pounds of pressure. That's enough to break a bone twice. Though I am glad I have friends to help me with the installation. Because, you know, that's important, oh. having friends. And if you great fans would like to see uh, George himself make something interesting next time, go to his Patreon page and drop him a few dollars. I don't, I don't have a Patreon. Oh, all right. Maybe I should get one. You know. I do have a URL. Well, see this, I can say this now so that when you have one, this, this, this video Ah, down the road. Still, yeah, this video. That's very clever. Shove this in people's faces. Yeah, what is that? Um, future proofing. Yeah. It's called evergreen content. Oh. Are you gonna are you gonna make a video about you hanging curtains? Yeah. A Thirty second video. Winston loves it. He's he's a mattress dog. Does he sleep on your mattress with you? Yes. Okay. Great. What are those little thingies called? Uh, dies maybe. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I inherited them from my grandfather, and they're one of my favorite things that I got from him. Those are pretty cool. Because I can put my name on metal. That's a good shot. I like that. You don't have any curtains in that room. Not People... yet. Oh, and your bushes are all chopped down, too. Yep. That's an exposed room. It is. But we're going to hang curtains. This is how you uh, cover up mistakes, because that's the mark of a good carpenter. It's not that you don't make them, it's that you hide them. There goes the bed. Murphy bed! Murphy bed. And the bed's closed, making this video over.